Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, I recently did two videos on a gentleman named Brian Johnson who has decided to spend his considerable resources to conquer the bane of all humankind, which is of course growing old and then dying. In those videos, I made the case that adding finasteride to the dozens of medications and supplements he is already taking would be a very good idea and be very conducive towards his goals. And that is because there are many anti-aging benefits to finasteride, including decreasing the chances of getting some of the worst diseases that shorten our lifespan, like heart disease and cancer, for instance. Now, let's imagine for a moment there was a bizarro world version of Brian Johnson who was committed to the opposite goal. In that universe, Brian Johnson would be doing everything possible to age his appearance and shorten his lifespan. The easiest way for a bizarro world version of Brian Johnson to do that would be to take up the terrible habit of smoking. Not only does smoking shorten our lifespan by causing things like heart attacks, emphysema, and cancer, it makes people look older by aging their skin and causing wrinkles. So smoking might be considered the bizarre world equivalent of finasteride because of all the negative health effects of smoking, which are the opposite of the benefits of finasteride. Unfortunately, despite this knowledge, people still take up smoking anyways, and they usually do so at a young age, and it is very, very addictive, so much so that it is almost impossible to quit it, even after you've wised up and realized how stupid it was to start it when you get older. Young people who smoke often think that the health risks will only affect them in the distant future, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, one of the effects of smoking that is very relevant to viewers of this channel is the effect of smoking on our hair. If smoking is the anti-finasteride equivalent in terms of causing premature aging, does it also oppose finasteride's effects on hair growth and cause premature hair loss? Well, usually on this channel, I emphasize that in the case of androgenic alopecia, the most common cause of hair loss, we are doomed by our genetics to either have the slaphead curse or not have it. That doesn't mean we can't do anything to change our fate, of course. After all, we can take finasteride minoxidil to stop the slaphead curse dead in its tracks, but it is ultimately our genetics that causes the increased DHT levels and greater androgen receptor density in our scalps that ultimately cause hair loss. And despite what a lot of scammers like to tell you, there aren't many environmental factors that that influence the course of our androgenic alopecia. So, when people ask me questions about lifestyle modifications they can make to stop their hair loss, I usually will just roll my eyes and brush it off because like it or not, with very, very few exceptions, hair loss is not linked to our health. You can be the absolute pinnacle of good health and still go completely bald, and conversely, you can live an absolutely shit lifestyle and still have a full head of hair. I mean, just look at someone like Steve Bannon, for instance. He's a Norwood one, despite looking like a homeless bum or your typical World of Warcraft player. So don't kid yourself with any of that hippie and woo bullshit. You're not going to stop androgenic alopecia by eating clean, exercising, or doing trendy fad diets like the keto diet or going gluten-free. Lifestyle changes aren't going to do squat. That is, of course, except for one very important exception, smoking. Now, I already did a video a couple of years ago on smoking and hair loss, and I'll link it below. I also did videos on marijuana use and alcohol use's connection to hair loss that I'll also link below too. But the message of my last smoking video was that the toxins produced by smoking actually do accelerate the process of hair loss, and the data is pretty good to support this conclusion. However, at the time, there were some conflicting studies, some of which showed a harmful effect of smoking on hair growth, while other studies seem to show no effect at all. So recently, some of the medical news sites started posting articles like these, saying that there is a recent study that once and for all confirms that smoking is associated with hair loss and can accelerate hair loss in people who have androgenic alopecia. The study that these headlines refer to is this study here. The study is not a new clinical trial. It is what's known as a meta-analysis. You can think of a meta-analysis as a study of studies. In a meta-analysis, similar studies are lumped together into one big study. The reason this is done is because oftentimes small studies just don't have enough subjects to yield results that are statistically significant. By combining the subjects from several studies together into one big study, though, you can come up with stronger results than you see in each individual study by itself. If it sounds like a gimmick, it's actually not. It is a mathematically sound procedure, though there are some limitations, particularly if you combine studies that don't use the same methodology. Nevertheless, meta-analyses are considered at the top or close to the top of the pyramid of scientific evidence, so they are very valuable forms of research. Also, after we go over the study, I'll tell you why I think this is likely to be the last and best study of smoking and hair loss that we will probably ever have. So, 
The authors in the study first go over the literature on smoking and hair loss and point out that the previous studies gave inconsistent results, which is why they decided to do this meta-analysis. They note that while hair loss may not be the most dangerous side effect of smoking, it still causes a lot of mental anguish for men, and you guys all know that, of course. Also, since there are estimated to be a billion smokers in the world, that's right, one billion, any effect of smoking on hair loss would literally affect a billion people. And since smoking is a totally self-inflicted condition, stopping smoking could have a major impact on reducing hair loss around the entire world. So, the authors of the meta-analysis found eight major smoking studies in the medical literature that included data on smoking and hair loss, specifically hair loss due to androgenic alopecia. And here is a breakdown of how they came up with these studies. The results of the study are presented in the form of what's called a forest plot. In a forest plot, each study in the meta-analysis is analyzed to come up with the probability that something will happen if you smoke versus if you don't smoke. This is called the odds ratio. For example, if we were to say that smoking had no effect on hair loss, the odds ratio of the probability of getting hair loss in smokers versus non-smokers would be equal, and the odds ratio would equal 1. If smoking cut the risk of you getting hair loss in half, though, let's say, the odds ratio would be 0.5. If smoking doubled the risk of hair loss, the odds ratio would be 2. So, this figure here is the effect of smoking on developing hair loss in men who smoke versus men who never smoked. In the graph, the odds ratio of each study is plotted and the diamond at the bottom of the graph is the overall average result. The study found that if you were a smoker, you were 1.82 times more likely to have hair loss than if you never smoked, so the risk is almost doubled. The next graph showed that men who smoked more than 10 cigarettes per day had an even higher risk compared to men who smoked less than 10 cigarettes per day. Their risk was 1.96 times higher than the risk in men who smoked less. The next graph shows that the risk of progression from a lower Norwood score to a higher score was 1.27 times higher in smokers than non-smokers. However, the number of cigarettes per day did not correlate with the amount of progression of hair loss. So the meta-analysis concluded that the previous studies that found no association between hair loss and smoking just didn't include enough subjects, and when these subjects were combined with the subjects from other studies, there is a clear-cut association between smoking and hair loss specifically in men with androgenic alopecia. So, what does that mean? Does smoking actually cause androgenic alopecia? Well, you might be surprised to hear this, but the truth is, I wouldn't conclude that at all. Androgenic alopecia is a genetic condition that results in excessive DHT in the hair follicles of the scalp. This excessive DHT leads to shortened hair cycles with miniaturization of the hairs and the eventual destruction of the hair follicles. However, androgenic alopecia is a condition that starts at different ages in different people, and I think cigarette smoking can be considered something that accelerates aging. For example, if you were destined to start getting androgenic alopecia at the age of 30, it is probable that smoking would cause it to start at age 20 instead. This is just like what happens with smoking and your skin health. Like I said before, smoking has a pro-aging effect as opposed to the anti-aging effects of finasteride or the other interventions that Brian Johnson is trying to use. If you're skeptical that smoking is a pro-aging substance, well first of all, you're crazy and I urge you to read this article here which I'll link below. The article quotes some extreme extremely grim statistics. Cigarette smoking reduces the lifespan by an average of 7 years. Also, of the 1.25 billion smokers in the world, half of them will be killed by tobacco-related diseases. Smoking causes the premature aging of the cells at the molecular level. There is cumulative damage to the cells that can accelerate aging. In the skin, smoking causes skin wrinkles, but even worse, it causes various skin cancers that can be fatal. So, we now know that we can add hair loss to the very long list of aging effects that smoking causes. So, smoking doesn't actually cause androgenic alopecia. No, it's your genetics that cause it. And if you don't have the genes for androgenic alopecia, then smoking won't speed up balding. So I don't want to hear anyone say anything stupid like, oh yeah, Kevin, well I have a 70-year-old uncle who smokes and he has a full head of hair, so ha ha. That's not what I'm saying here, Chooms. Smoking doesn't activate any dormant androgenic alopecia genes, but smoking absolutely can accelerate it, as this new smoking study shows. I can tell you with 
with the utmost certainty that this study is as definitive as we are ever going to get about the effects of smoking on hair loss. You can argue that the study just shows a correlation and not a causation, but in order to show actual causation, it would be necessary to do a randomized controlled trial. But that is never, ever going to happen because it would be extremely unethical to do so since you can't do a study that randomizes subjects to an intervention that is known to be harmful. It's not just unethical, it's even illegal as it goes against international law as written in the Helsinki Accords. So even though my main focus on this channel is hair loss, I have heard some people describe this as a self-improvement channel, so I doubt many of you chooms watching are actual smokers. But if you are, you need to quit right away. Quitting will not only save your hair, it will probably also save your life as well. Now, I know some smokers watching this will be all like, but Kevin, that's easier said than done, bro. Don't you have any practical advice to help me quit? Well, I hear you, chums. Sometimes willpower alone isn't enough to win this fight. After all, tobacco is an extremely addictive substance, so it's necessary to overcome not just the psychological effects of smoking, but the physiological addiction as well. Usually that means trying to taper off the cigarettes and not going cold turkey. One way to do that is to use a substitute source for nicotine, which is the addictive chemical found in cigarettes. This can be done by using nicotine gum or nicotine patches, or even by vaping. Even just decreasing the number of cigarettes you smoke per day can be a huge step in the right direction. Gradually over time, the trick is to decrease the amount of nicotine you're ingesting so that the chemical addiction goes away and your body becomes less dependent on the drug. After that, it is much easier to quit completely. But I know it sounds easier than it really is. Definitely talk to your doctor about all the resources available to stop smoking. Doctors love to encourage people to stop smoking because smoking causes an endless amount of health problems in people. I'm hoping this new study on smoking and hair loss provides some incentive to get young people to stop smoking. When you're young, diseases like heart disease and cancer seem to be so far in the future to worry about that we often take it for granted. But hair loss is something that affects our lives right now in our daily lives. So knowing that smoking may be causing us to lose our hair might be just the incentive you need to quit the habit completely. All right. Thank you for watching, Chooms. I'll see you next time. God bless.